to know this when it comes to finances. When we think about retirement planning, we think about, okay, we go through these two stages of life. I work for money, money works for me. But one of the models that I like showing people is this one where you have right there, those are, that's my income. Now, when we look at income, we say, okay, whatever your income is, there it is. Down here, you have expenses. Now, as life goes on, what ends up happening is income goes down because you retire, right? But your expenses go on. Then you're gonna have this gap between what I need to spend and what I've got coming in in income. Now, in retirement, you're gonna have some of your income from Social Security, right? The rest of the income may need to come from like pensions, but a lot, pen a lot of people don't even have pensions anymore, or investment income. I need to have money coming from my investments. Well, how much? How can I figure out that number? Well, it's kind of cool because academic research gives us ways to know that number or get an idea of what that number is. One of the things we know is this. Let's say that you are using finger painting, for example. I like to use this example to help people understand investing. When I look at combining yellow and blue, I get green, right? We know that. Well, the same thing with investing. If I know what areas of the market you're exposed to in your portfolio, I can give you an idea of what the return is. Let's say that I look historically at large U.S. stocks. You've got small companies, you've got large companies, you have growth companies and value companies. Gr large growth companies are well-established companies. Historically, the S&P 500, the return has been long run about 10%. Well, if we look at small growth companies, it's about 12%. If we look at large value, about 11 and small value, some in the neighborhood of 13, 14% has been the return. Well, let's say I'm talking about my yellow versus blue and combining them together and I get green, right? Well, if I combine these asset categories right here, what happens is I know that my expected return ought to be somewhere in between those two numbers. Now, if I know how much I have in each of these areas, both in U.S. and international markets, I can get an idea of what that amount of money that I'm putting away and how much I have accumulated so far, how much it will likely grow to. And if I know how much it grows to, I can tell you how much income I can take from that. So therefore, it's really important to understand that there's academic research that can give us these numbers or give us an idea of how much we might likely have in the future. Well, this is important because so often what I find with people is they're like putting money away and they have no clue. Do I have enough? Am I putting away enough? Am I going to have enough? This is a way of knowing that. And if this is not how you're approaching financial planning for the future, you may wanna take a second look at how you're going about this process.